Welcome to iLectures Online, and here's the continuation of lesson number two in algebra where we solve for variables in formulas. So we have three new formulas for you here. One is the profit cost of revenue formula. The profit is equal to the price times the quantity sold minus the cost. Here we have the amount of simple interest and simple interest. Here we have the amount is equal to the principal invested times one plus the rate times the time. Solve that for time. And here we have the depreciation equation. Solve for S, where the depreciation quantity is equal to the cost minus the salvage value divided by the number of years you depreciated over times the time that has elapsed. All right, so in each case we need to solve for a variable. So let's circle the variable we're looking for. Here we're going to solve that for X. Here we're going to solve it for T, and here we're going to solve this for S. And how do we do that? At first it looks a little daunting, but if you follow the simple principles, it's not so bad. First of all, we're looking for the variable that's on the right side of the equation, so let's change it around, move everything on the right side to the left, everything on the left side to the right. So we have Px minus C equals the profit. All right, now, since we're looking for x, we want to get rid of the minus c, so add plus c to both sides, or simply move the minus c to the other side, and it becomes a plus c. So we have p times x equals uh, profit plus the cost. And finally, again, since we're looking for x, we want to get rid of the p. We divide the left side by p. We divide the right side by p. Now, this is profit, and this is price, so they're definitely two different p's. This will cancel out. We have x is equal to profit plus cost divided by the price. There. Okay, next equation. Again, the variable we're looking for is on the right side, so we're going to move the whole thing to the left side, move the a to the right side. We have the, uh, the principal. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I was thinking about profit, but no. In this case, p is the principal invested, so p times 1 plus r times t equals a. So simply switch the equation over left side to the right side, right side to the left side. Since we're looking for t, and t is inside these parentheses, we probably want to get rid of parentheses first, so multiply the p times both quantities inside the parentheses. That means p times 1 is p, and p times r times t is plus p r t equals a. So simply get rid of the parentheses first. Now we realize, since we're looking for t, we get rid of the term that does not have a t in it, move that to the other side over here, and of course, when we move that to the other side, that becomes a negative p, so we have p r times t is equal to a minus p, and finally, since we're looking for t, we want to get rid of the coefficient, we want to divide the left side by p and r to get rid of the p and r, of course, we must do exactly the same to the right side, the p's cancel out, the r's cancel out, we have t is equal to a minus p divided by p times r. Third equation, we're looking for the s. That's a scrap value. Okay, it's on the right side of the equation. Let's move the equation around. So this becomes a quantity C minus S over N times T equals the depreciated value. Okay, we have parentheses there. On top of that, we have an N in the denominator. So what we can do is we can multiply both sides by the N and then we'll get rid of the parentheses. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply the left side by N and multiply the right side by N to get rid of the fraction, get rid of the number in the denominator. Here the n's will cancel out, so we end up with c minus s times t is equal to n times d. Now we get rid of the parentheses, we multiply the t with the c and the s, so this becomes c times t minus s times t is equal to n times d. Now don't forget, we're solving for the s, so the next thing we want to do is get rid of the term that does not have an s in it, so we'll move the c times t over the other side. Of course, that becomes a minus, so we have minus s times t equals nd minus c times t. And finally, to isolate the s, we're going to divide the left side by a minus t. We want to get rid of both the minus and the t, so we're going to divide the left side by minus t, which means we're going to, move to divide the right side by minus t. So the minus cancels out, the t cancels out, and left with an S on the left side, which is what we're looking for, and the right side we end up with an ND minus CT over a negative T. Now typically what we do when we have that extra negative there is we can multiply the top and the bottom by a negative 1. That will get rid of the negative here, that will make this negative and this positive, so we'll switch it around so we can then say that S is equal to a positive CT 
minus an ND divided by a positive T. And that just looks a little bit better like that. Not too many negative signs that way. But there's S isolated, and that's how we do that. So here's three very good examples of how you solve for a, for a particular variable inside a formula. All right, hope that helps. See you next time.